after the Emancipation Proclamation was signed by Abraham Lincoln, that they had to dispatch General Gordon Granger and his troops. They didn't just send one brother. They had to send the army. You hear me? Rumor has it that the Texas Rangers, for that two and a half years that it took them to get noticed, and the Texas ranchers would either bribe or kill the messenger. So the president had to send General Gordon Granger and his troops to Texas to announce to the last of the enslaved people that they had won their freedom. Now it's called Juneteenth because it happened during the teen days of June. So maybe he was in Dallas on the 13th and in uh, Fort Wayne on the 14th and then on the 15th he hit Houston. And then finally, finally, arrived into the coastal town of Galveston, Texas on the 19th of June and announced to the last of the enslaved people that they had won their freedom. You know, we are the children of those who chose to survive. Can you feel that? We are the children of those who chose to survive. Remember, they came to the continent of Africa and they stole our kings and queens. They threw us in the holes of ships like sardines and treated us worse than cattle. Along the Middle Passage, thousands upon thousands of us died, some by choice, many not. Then they arrived in the continent of North America into the peculiar institution of slavery, where things got even worse. Then those who survived slavery to be freed in 1865, had to deal with Jim Crow, lynching, the Ku Klux Klan, water hoses, voting rights. It hasn't been hard, it hasn't been easy. Fire hoses and dogs were the norm. Fire hoses and dogs were the norm. We are the children of those who chose to survive. You heard the struggle. Merely by being here, your ancestors have proven the superiority. Do you feel me? It takes a lot to go through that. I don't know if I can handle it. I don't know. I might have jumped off the boat, y'all. I might have. But my great, 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 great grandfather didn't. Or my great, 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 great grandmother didn't. Because we are the children of those who chose to survive. Now I'm going to leave you with my favorite quote. Felicia, you know this is my heart, don't you? You can do it without the prayer. It's a quote that I found some time ago, and, and you have to understand when, when the African Americans, when the enslaved people were in, uh, free, there was chaos. There was a whole bunch of us, y'all, and they didn't know what to do with us. Where, what direction should we go? So there were two camps. We had Booker T. Washington on this side and W.E.B. Du Bois on this side. Booker T. was saying, listen, we need to get our act together. We need to open up some business. We need to get us some farms. We need to develop some factories. And we need to get commercials and empower ourselves economically. And W.E.B. Du Bois, he went down with that. He said we needed to get educated. We need to get an education, we need to get involved politically, we need to become mayors and governors and senators and representatives, we need to empower ourselves politically. So Booker T. Washington, after debate after debate, said the following things. He said, in all things purely social, you know what I mean by purely social, right? If I want to play gin rum here, if I want to go bowling, or want to do horseshoes, or, or, or what is that, line dancing, or uh, go get my groove on and do karaoke bar, that's all social, and that's fine. We can, we can be as separate as the fingers when we do that, all right? But we need to be one, like the hand, in all things beneficial to our mutual progress. Okay? And you know what I mean by mutual progress. I'm, I'm talking about economic empowerment. I'm talking about educating our children. I'm talking about creating communities that we can live in in safety. Do you get it? In all 
all things purely social, we can be as separate as the fingers, yet one as a hand in all things beneficial to our mutual progress. Don't go away. There's more Juneteenth after this. Leaders need to be unified. We got a lot of uh, talent coming down this evening. Uh, we want you guys to stick around. Those of you at home and are watching, shame on what you. What they say is they either killed the messenger or they bribed him off so that way the slaves didn't find out. If the sun makes you free, then you're free indeed. You don't have to be in bondage. We love the Lord and so much that we are willing to step out and be part of our community. Join the village. Hi, my name is Paul Heron Jr. And my dad said he'd pay me a quarter for every person I got to come down and join the village, whatever that means. So I figured I'd just come on TV, smile real nice, and ask you guys to come down and join the village. So if a thousand of you guys come down and tell my dad you saw this commercial, I'll be set. Then again, we might as well make that 6,000, because my friends want in too. Juneteenth, African American Independence Day, a time to reflect and rejoice. June 16th through the 19th in downtown Flint. From noon to 9.30, every day. <laughs> Vending opportunities. Oh yeah, there's still time to sign up. Contact us at 810-239-2901. That's 810-239-2901. Juneteenth, African American Independence Day. Join the village. Did I say 25 cents? Oh man, how you gonna play me like that? Ladies and gentlemen, without any further ado, I'd like to introduce one of the co-chairs of the Dream Team celebration, Mrs. Catherine Flint. Who that be? Happy Jim Team, happy Jim Team again, everybody. Uh, I have a treat for you. How many of you know Pastor Juanita Crump? Well, you've got a treat in store. Pastor Juanita Crump from Fivefold Ministries has come to give us some words of hope in this economic crisis that we're in. Even though we're in dire straits right now, there is hope. And she has come here to give us some words of hope. Put your hands together for Pastor Juanita Crump of Fivefold Ministries. I'm not upset that nobody knows who the fact that she said that I get to turn around and look and see who she's talking about. As a part of this celebration, my responsibility was to uh, present a historical perspective on whether or not we should still have hope or whether we should have hope deferred. Now, as I heard the young man talk about our history and the sacrifices that was made for our forefathers and mothers, I'm reminded of something that is critical. And that is they, they never, in spite of their situation, they never lost faith.